What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of La Liga Career Mode. This is episode number 42 and we're starting today's episode off with possibly the biggest game of the series. Yeah, cannot wait for this. 11 games remain in La Liga. Granada, top of the table by two points. And our first game today are our closest challengers, the holders, Real Madrid away at the Bernabeu. And today's episode, without question, the biggest of the series. Real Madrid... Then Roma, second leg, Europa League last 16, and then Barcelona as well. No doubt about it, biggest episode to save. And literally, heading into this gaming session here, I was so nervous, man. I was so, so nervous. But I thought this could be the episode where we know we can be league winners. We can win the Europa League. We can win the double. So heading into the game from the first whistle, I was really aggressive. I was really attack mind. I thought, you know what? Against Real in the reverse fixture, I should have won it. And the bundles of chances in the game in Andalusia, I just didn't take them and we ended up drawing. I felt if I was aggressive once again, I'd get the luck in this one and I'd win it. So I went at Real. A draw would do me fine. We'd stay two points clear, 10 games to go. Oh my god, and 27 minutes in, I almost scored the goal of the save. Antonio, with an incredible solo run, beat three or four white shirts and then hit the post as eventually Courtois will claim the rebound. We made a brilliant start at Bernabeu. We'd been the better team. And how often does this happen? 31 minutes in, after we made a brilliant start, we'd hit the woodwork, we'd add Real Madrid under the cosh. They get one chance, and they take it. Rodrigo with his 20th of the season, receives the ball. It's a brilliant first touch and finish, to be fair. No chance for our number one. And the top scorer in La Liga this year puts Real in front against the runner play. And I was thinking, right, the next 15 minutes are crucial. Right before the break, I cannot afford to capitulate. And Real went 2 and up. Yep. At this point, I was absolutely seething, and especially for this goal here, because you might not have seen it initially, but like, I'm not sure who it was. It was Paolo Dybala ran into Maximiano when the shot was taken. If I wanted to play for realism, I could say the goal should have been disallowed for interference with play for offside. Clearly, that doesn't exist in FIFA, though, and obviously Maximiano wouldn't be... He would be obstructed by the view in, in real life, but not so much in the game, obviously. But even so, Real scored two goals in the final three minutes of the first half, including right before the break. The referee played on, I thought it was going to blow for half-time, a minimum of one added minutes, and they scored into the third one, yeah. Well, Sam bags his second of the game. It was a brilliant little one-two, to be fair, and a clinical finish into the bottom corner, but... What an awful way to end what had been a decent start to the game. In the first half an hour, all Granada. And then in 15 minutes, three goals for Real. And the game was already done. So, in the second half, I, I, I took off a few of my starters at the break. I thought, you know what? We've got Roma on Thursday night. This game's done. Forget all about it. We would get a consolation goal back through Ruben Rashina. I felt I deserved a goal after my start to the game in the first half an hour. And to be fair, four minutes later, another golden chance. Azuni holds it up, plays it back to Suarez, and Thibaut turns it behind for a corner. And I had my chances in this game. I really did. The first half an hour belonged to us. We had a few good chances in the second, including the goal scored by Rashina. But unfortunately, it was just one of those games where the quality shines through and I often talk about it this is this is what makes this game really hard this year you know the AI they, they need they need one chance to get a goal you know and they'll probably score it you might need three or four so being clinical is just so crucial and in the end that's what it came down to you'll see the stats in just a moment's time I played just as good as Real, like just as good, if not in my opinion, slightly better. I don't think I'm being biased there either, right? I really feel when you look at the stats here, I played pretty well. The XG was slightly higher, we had an abundance of more shots and chances, but when you look at it, Real scored with every single one they had. We took one of our five or six good ones, and that, in the end, is what proved to make the difference. So, unfortunately, a loss to Real Madrid sees us drop down to second in the table. The Galacticos once again leapfrog us and go into a pole position by a point. Ten games to go, and there's still only eight points separating the top five. So it's still a very, very tight tight race between several teams. But the significance of the loss is, of course, what it means to their head-to-head -head standings. As we know in La Liga, it goes head-to-head -head and then goal difference if you're tied on points. And so because of that, it means that Real now know if we finish level with them on points, they'll win the title. Because they drew with us in Andalusia, but beat us in Madrid. So... 
Yeah, huge defeat there. Couldn't really afford it. A draw would have done me fine. Instead, we get thrashed 4-1 and let's say brought back down to earth. Our winning run over in La Liga and it came against the worst opponent it could have been. So following game, and I was thinking, how do we pick ourselves up for this? Jose Mourinho's AS Roma away at the Stadio Olimpico. We beat them in the first leg. We rode our luck and then some. I didn't play very well. I probably deserved to lose. In the end, we scraped through with a 2-1 victory. Taking one away in Italy, though, and heading into the game. Last time we were in Italy, we lost. We got beat by Atalanta. We still made it through the tie, but we lost on the night. And heading into this game, I'd made the better start, but you would have seen some warning signs early. Antonio going up for an aerial duel, staying down. He would soldier on, so I knew it was just going to be a bruise. But 33 minutes in... Just like in the game in Madrid, a goal against a run of play, and my opponents are in front. Patrick Bamford makes it 1-0. Roma have the lead. We're tied on aggregate, and then seven minutes later, Calvin Phillips, another ex-Leeds boy, rolls it across. It's a brilliant first-time ball by Karsdorp. And Jonathan David, who scored in Andalusia, scores again. You would have seen in the reverse fixture, that was his first goal of the competition. How often does that happen? You'll take on a striker who's struggling mightily, and oh, when you just know it, they end their goal drought against you. He scores two against me in both games. It's 2-0, two goals conceded in seven minutes, and Roma from a goal down in the tie, now lead by two on the night and one on aggregate. So as the second half began, eight minutes after the restart, I was thinking already down by one, game's still there. And unfortunately, the former Leeds boys in this game just turned up. Patrick Bamford scored the first, and then Calvin Phillips scored the third. And I was all over the place. I was getting absolutely torn apart in this game. And I couldn't stop them. Every time Roma came forward, they just seemed to breach me. Karsdorp was having an absolute stormer in this game. He got three assists for Roma's first three goals. And then with 15 minutes to go, as we were down by two, we needed a miracle in a game where I hadn't played well and this sort of summed it up with Alex Centellas. What do I always say this is why some of you guys will talk about it and say why do, why do you never put a tackle in? Why do you never put a tackle in with the balls inside your area? There's your reason why. You miss time by a fraction of a second. It's a penalty. Exactly what happens there. Alex Centellas brings his man down. Lorenzo Pellegrini the Roma skipper still there. He's amazing in this game. Puts it in top bin. Sends Maximiano the wrong way. It's four. It's game over. It's good night. Granada absolutely torn apart in Rome and it was a Jose Mourinho masterclass stoppage time losing by four on the night and three over two legs we would grab a consolation goal Sugawara to Antonio who soldiered on for the whole of the game despite carrying a knock I knew it was just going to be a bruise uh, talk about it before I can often tell how bad an injury is going to be based on the animation alone I knew it would just be a bruise for Antonio so I thought I might as well keep him out there because he won't be fitting us play against Barcelona so I might as well just keep him out there for the rest of the game he scored a consolation but that's all it proved to be final score on the night Roma four Granada one Yep, back-to-back -back games with the same scoreline. Once again, I don't think I played that badly, to be fair, especially in the first half, but... Karsdorp tore me apart in this game with his creativity. I talked about Roma's midfield in the last episode. That's their strongest area at this point in the save. And they absolutely dominated midfield. You, you know in Football Manager, when uh, your assistant manager, the, the most common piece of advice he'll give you with being overrun in midfield... My assistant was, was in my ear all game long saying that. He was like, Docs, you've got to change something, mate, because we are literally getting absolutely destroyed in the middle of the park. And I was like, no, 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 we're fine. No, we weren't. 4-1, we're out, humiliated. And the board after that thought, right, let's schedule a performance review meeting. And my position as manager is now currently under close observation, which I think is pretty harsh. You know, my manager ratings dropped to 50 now. And OK, we were asked to reach the final of the Europa League and we're out in the last 16. But that was always going to be a tough ask in our first ever year in Europe. I was targeting quarters or semis. And OK, we still fell short of that. But even so, that was a tough ask. In the league, we're in a title race. Yes, we dropped a second, but we're only a point behind Real Madrid. And we hit our cup objective by reaching the last 16. So I think that's a really, really harsh thing for the board to say. They're now considering our position as manager. And I'm starting to fear this act. Two humiliating results. See us lose our lead at the top of the table. And now get dumped out of the Europa League in humiliating fashion. And I was thinking, right, position under threat. Manager rating dropping significantly, and now we head to Catalonia to take on Xavi's Barca, who are also in this title race.
Okay. Let's just say things don't get any easier. So because of that, I headed into this game and I thought, all right, okay, I've, I've got to at least get a point because if I lose three on the bounce, and we talk about it a lot, because four is so important in FIFA nowadays, if you do lose two or possibly three on the bounce, your players just feel like they're stuck in mud. And it's, 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 not, it's not a psychological thing. In fact, it's actually proved by the fact you'll see their temporary attribute increases become decreases because their form is bad. So heading into the game, I thought the worst we can do is get a point. That's the absolute worst I'll accept, but a win would be huge. And after Frankie de Jong opened the scoring, obviously a big transfer target for Manchester United. He made it 1-0 with his four for the year. I was starting to panic big time. With no Antonio out there, how are we going to respond to going a goal down early? Well, perfect response. Right from kickoff. You know, I love those kickoff goals. Suarez makes it 1 1, and we're back on level terms. He almost puts in front for the first time in the game. Would have done so had it not been for Ter Stegen making a brilliant spread stop on the 1 on 1. Spread stop? Can we, can we coin that phrase? Spread stop? I like that. But even so, it's it's 1-1 one, one, and then three minutes for the break. I thought, I'm sick of this. I'm absolutely sick of this. Once again, I'm playing really well and I'm behind. Frankie de Jong bags his brace and it's 2-1. And I couldn't believe this. It was a game, the third straight, where I played really well. But I just wasn't getting the rubber to green. 50 minutes in, Suarez hits the bar. But when you need a bit of luck, sometimes you will get it. Off the crossbar from the chip. Bars are trying to play out from the back, gift us the opportunity, Mia rolls it across, and there is our number nine to make it 2-2. And the battle between Frankie and Luis Javier, they're both bag braces, and there was a whole half to play. 2-2, 55 minutes in, Rashina, great ball through to Darwin, he's got Frankie to beat, he beats the Dutch midfielder in a foot race, rolls it across, but misses everyone, brilliant chance for he somehow misses every white shirt in the box, but the chance remains alive, Neighbor rolls it across, and Mia turns it in, and I was going absolutely ballistic, 12 minutes after the restart, and I was thinking, right... I am not losing this time because once again, I played really, really well and I was getting sick of this, absolutely sick of this. I was gripping the controller. The, the vein in my forehead was bulging so much, it looked like it was going to burst. We were leading by a goal. I was concentrating with all my might and 68 minutes in. Man, oh man, Luis Maximiano might have shipped eight goals in the past two games, but what a save to keep us still leading by one. And with 10 minutes on the clock, game over, good night, screw you, ultimate. Yes, get in, Luis Javier Suarez heads in the corner, it loops over to Stegen, and Granada come from behind to lead twice we battle back from a goal deficit to tie it and i love this goal as well because who did suarez beat in the air frankie de jong yeah a battle between the two of them they both scored two goals each but our number nine beats the dutch midfielder for goals scored and for that goal itself barca two granada five because rodriguez comes off the bench for suarez after he got his hat trick i thought i'd rest him the game seemed done as we had a two goal cushion and rodriguez Bags our fifth, turns in a cutback, it's game over, it's good night. We've got back to winning ways when it mattered most. Yet the board threatening me with potentially being sacked. What a response. We come to Catalonia for the second time in a row in this save. Last season and this, we're going to win. Dembele did get a goal back for Barca with two minutes to go. And my defense, once again, pretty poor for that moment there. So 5-3, but I still felt confident we'll be able to see the game out leading by two. And then it's stoppage time. Goodness gracious me. I mean, this was just a game where the defense from both teams absolutely shambolic. Yeah, Rodriguez bags are sixth. Two goals in 10 minutes for our number 99. And that would do it. I don't know what the defense is about in this game. But the clinical finishing from that man ensures we do get the win. He scored half our goals. And we win a nine-goal thriller. Yep, Barcelona three. Granada, six. Without question, one of my wins of the save. I pulled out of the bag when I need it in the most. And finally, at the third attempt, it's a game where I play really well in a massive match. And I get the luck I deserved. Third time's the charm, right? 6-3 the final score. Yes, we've been dumped out of Europe. Yes, we've lost our lead at the top of the table. With nine games to go, it's only the one point. It's become a two-horse race now. Real are eight points clear of Fletico with seven points clear of Simeone's side. What was a five-horse race has been cut to two. It's us versus Real Madrid in a straight shootout for La Liga title. Nine games to go. 
can we pull off the impossible and pit them to the crown? Well, that will end today's episode of La Liga Carimba, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you have a like, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of La Liga Career Mode very soon.